You know, after the events of 2020, I was hoping that 2021 would be just a completely boring year with absolutely nothing happening unless it's good stuff. And yet after the events of January 6th, it seems like we've gotten off to a bit of a rocky start to say the least. And it begs the question, do teachers even have any business discussing political issues or news of the day with students? A lot of schools say no. A lot of administrators have warned teachers to not touch politics with a 29 and a half foot pole. But what about the upcoming inauguration of Joe Biden? Is there a way to talk about the inauguration in a way that doesn't bring your own political views into it? I believe there is. Stick with me and let's talk about it. Hi, and welcome to Classroom Confidential. My name is Christopher Youngren, and I'm a middle school ELA teacher in Tucson, Arizona. If this is your first time joining me, then hey, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. So, just like every other aspect of the most recent election, the inauguration is going to be a horse of a bit of a different color. And it's certainly a hot button topic for a lot of people. And so you got to wonder, is this something that we as teachers should be talking about with our students? And I think it is. I think there's a way to present the inauguration in a way that puts it in a historical context talks about the cultures and traditions and oaths and whatnot without really showing which side of the aisle that you lay on. And it begins with the discussion on a peaceful transition of power. Now, clearly, there hasn't been anything peaceful about this transition of power, but you don't need to get into that with your students unless you are comfortable doing so. Use your head. You know your school. You know your admin. You know your students. It absolutely depends on the ages of your students. You're not going to talk about the inauguration with a five-year-old the same way you are with a 17-year-old or 18-year-old senior in high school. There are things that you can get away with talking to older students about that younger students aren't ready for or just really aren't going to understand. But when it comes down to it, at the heart of the matter, we can at least talk about a peaceful transition. You can ask a five-year-old, what does a peaceful transition mean? Why is it important for one person to pass the power on to another person in a way that's friendly and that's received in a friendly way as well? Five-year-olds are going to get it, just as much as 18-year-olds are going to recognize that there's nothing peaceful about the transition that's occurring here. So again, gauge your own classes, gauge your own schools, talk about why it is so important to honor each other as leaders, to respect each other as leaders as the torch is passed from one to the next. Look, kids are not idiots, and we are absolutely fooling ourselves if we believe that the events of the last few months have gone unnoticed by them. They may not understand it all, but they know that something is different, that something is strange, and that a lot of people are upset. And so I think we should talk about those differences. We should talk about the inauguration historically versus what's going on this year, and the differences, and what they mean. What does it mean to have one president refusing to attend the inauguration of the next president? How is COVID affecting everything? Why are there 25,000 troops protecting the inauguration? And why is the mall in Washington, D.C. completely bare? What does it say about our country that all these things are going on versus how things have happened historically? I think even the youngest of kids can understand understand these things at a very base level. And I think that, again, if you leave your opinion and your venom and animosity may be out of it, because there's, there's a lot of hot emotions out there right now, if you leave yourself out of it and put it on them, it gives them a platform to speak. It allows their voices to be heard. And as I pointed out in, in another video, their voices need to be validated. They need to feel like they have a voice because, you know, I'm sorry, I don't want to be glib about this, but Whitney Houston was right. The children are our future and we need to teach them about the world that we're living in, even from a young age, because they have a place in it. They have a voice in it and they are important. 
It also goes without saying that this inauguration is of monumental historical significance as it is the first time that we have ever had a woman vice president and a woman of color, no less. Ask the students, what do you think about that? Why do you think that's never happened before? And how do you think that's going to affect our country moving forward in the future? There are so many little girls out there that have this moment now to look up to uh, soon to be Vice President Harris in a way that they've never been able to before because there's never been anybody in this position before. And that alone makes it absolutely worth talking about. This is also a great opportunity to talk about all of the people involved in the inauguration. The president, the vice president, how are they different? Who swears them in? Who is this judge that's swearing them in? Why is it a judge? Why do they place their hand on the Bible? What is the constitution? What is an oath? You know, there are all these different things, all of these terms that kids might find very confusing. But if you break it down and if you talk to them about it, I think there's a way to explain it in a way that they can absolutely understand. So they realize how absolutely significant this event is, especially when it only happens once every four years. It's history in real time, and I think it is absolutely essential for every student. And finally, you can look at the oath of office itself, and you can take it line by line. This works especially well in English class, and you can show your students how much power these words have and why it's so important for the president to uphold these words, not just to speak them, but to live them and what happens when a president doesn't. You can take it further then and you can have the students as a class work on developing maybe a class oath or uh, pair them up and have them do friendship oaths or individual oaths as a citizen. Sky's the limit on where you take it, but, but showing them the importance of words words, showing them how powerful words can be, especially if you walk the talk, I think is an absolutely imperative lesson. Look, again, use your noodle. You know what's appropriate at your own school. You know what's going to fly with your kids. But please remember this. Kids are much smarter than grown-ups sometimes give them credit for being. They are hungry for knowledge. They want a better understanding of the world they live in, the country they live in, and how it all ties together with their place in it. So talk about it, especially now in these crazy times. Don't just shut it out when every thing is so chaotic and confusing, now more than ever, kids need a platform to let their voices be heard. And when they know their voices are being heard, they will feel valid. And when they feel valid, they will know that they're not just a citizen of your classroom community, but that they're a citizen of the country and the world. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you're well out there. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, and take care of someone else. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.